Hey, Riding Superstars! So, so guys, just like last week, I'm going to spend two nice long episodes showing you exactly how we got our beautiful little Mowgli from being re-backed last week to this this week. I'm so proud of him. Mowgli and I have been doing our double lunge since we saw you last time and he is doing amazingly. I'm so proud of him, as always. I think this week has probably been the biggest difference so far, so I'm really proud of him and can't wait to show you. I just finished double lunging him now, but when I did it, my I'm pretty good at thinking and talking at the same time, but the double lunge and explaining was a bit much for me. <laughs> so I filmed it and I'm going to voice over, watch it back and voice over exactly what I was doing because it was a bit tricky for me to actually say it and do it at the same time. I, I thought I was good, but it wasn't that good. But before we get into that, let me show you about my tools, hey baby, and what we've got going on. So all you need to do for double lunging in terms of tools is you need a second lunge rope and the lunge rope you had already. Okay, so it's really, really simple. The lunge rope for the inside, people do things in different ways. I do it this way, but what that means is that you have to change it from each direction. So if you had a horse that you can't keep going in the right direction, you might do it a different way, which would be the same way that the outside rein is done, and I'll show you that in a moment. The way my brain works is I'm not quick enough, I don't think, and good enough myself to be able to think that quickly and change it. So I only have it going in one direction and that's my measure. I do double lunge when I can control them, when I can keep them going in one direction, okay? So inside rein, same as normal, just through the bit, clip it to the side of the, the, um, the saddle or the girth so that it can slide through. So you'd get the feeling, and you can really see that there, Ashy, that it slides through. Yeah, guys? So that you still get that feeling of connection, but the freedom that he's able to move around a bit as well, okay? On the outside rein, and this is what makes it the double lunge, this then goes through the stirrup and clips to the bit, okay? Now, I always try to keep my stirrups up, but inevitably with pressure, they do just come down. It's a bit of a nature of the beast. Ideally, I'd like them to stay up. So I do put them up with the intention that they stay there, but with a bit of pressure, sometimes they come down, okay? But that's the idea. So the outside rein, so this would be your outside, clips directly to the bit through the stirrup and then around the back of the bottom. Okay, and when it goes around the back of the bottom, you'll see when we get started, it's not tight. It's not tight up under his tail. It's just gently and happily hanging around here. Okay, around this area here. Not tight, just as an encouragement to come up behind. Okay, when I'm using the reins then, I use them like I would when I ride him. So what it gives you is the next step toward having them feel like what they feel when you're riding them, but, it's, but you're on the ground still, okay? So I move my fingers like I would when I ride, yeah? I might change his flexion like I would when I ride. If I feel his shoulder coming out, I'll stop it with my outside rein like I would when I ride. So the idea is, is that they're lunging along with the feeling that they're gonna get when you're on them. And you'll see the massive difference in the way he goes. I'm able to help him in those moments where he gets really upset with the little canter, with the little um, pig roots and things like that, or fucking bronc that he is sometimes. I'm able to help him with that, okay? You do have to be quite coordinated. There's lots of cords going everywhere. You don't wanna get them wrapped around your hands. You don't want to have them stood on. So it is quite something to concentrate a lot on. And you'll see I had to concentrate so much that I'm not even able to do it and talk to you at the same time. You know how normally I am pretty good at that. Some horses, you don't need the whip. You just need a little bit of an encouragement with the, the lunge rein that's sitting underneath their bottom, okay? underneath their bottom just here. But other horses, you will need a whip as well, which makes it even more complicated because <laughs> you've got to hold them and use the whip too. So I'm going to get in and show you what to do. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, guys, so here we are with our double lunging. So you can see how I've shown you the setup. So you've got the lunge around the outside of the horse, which is connected to the bit, through the saddle to stop it from going on the ground. And it's just 
gently encouraging the hind leg. You can see like always, there's not loads and loads of pressure on those reins because all the, the two reins, the point is not actually to pull the horse's head down. The, ho the point is just to start to get the horse to have the same feeling that he might have when you're riding him in terms of how the bridle feels. Okay, it allows him to not fall to the outside like originally we did in the first two videos because in the first two videos we wanted to let him fall to the outside so that he felt a bit freer, he didn't have to be so upright and that he was able to just um, travel around in a more open manner. Now we're putting the two reins on there to allow him to really be able to understand that there's a connection with two reins and that he doesn't drift so much. However, they're all still sliding and they're all still moving. So he is actually able to um, drift if he needs to. So when he gets stuck, like just here actually, I let him drift a little bit and then I bring him to a bit more upright. So that's what the double lunging does. Okay, and you can see the difference in him already. It's just incredible. I'm so, 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 so proud of him. It just makes such a difference. And normally I would talk to you guys while I'm doing this, but when I was in there with the arena and I've got, you know, two lead ropes to deal with, he's also a little bit lazy and a whip as well. I just try to get that ability to talk to you and show you what I'm doing at the same time just wasn't possible. But if you watch him go around here, you'll see how much calmer he's become since last time we were going along. How much calmer he's become since, um, since only a week ago. It, it's quite incredible. And he's just come along so beautifully. So now what we're going to do is start to work on transitions, going trot, canter, trot, canter. You'll see that I allow him to be a little free and still let him wander a little bit, but I massage the bridle over the tongue so that he starts to understand the concept of loosening and opening a little bit. I still use my whip the way I was originally, which is I try to have it higher for go. And you'll see every time I ask him to go a little bit, he gets a bit confused and a bit stuck because he's not able to drift like he was before. When that happens and you see he's a little stuck, you just release him and let him drift for a moment. And you'll see soon that he'll actually there start to canter a little bit. And you saw that moment where the rhythm changed a little bit. Even though he didn't canter, I still reward him. They tried again just there. I still reward him because he changed the rhythm and he broke to canter. But without that leg yield ability or that ability to drift a little bit, he's finding it a bit tricky to actually canter. So I just persist. And again, you'll see systematically that rhythm changes right there. Again, a little bit. And that's the moment of him trying to canter. So again... You'll see the rhythm change. Well, he changed, he, then he got it. And he did the flying change into it there. So he started on the wrong lead and then went, flew, flew over. And you see now that's made the trot a little bit faster and off he goes again. He tried to do his little runaway bucket thing, but because I was able to help him with both sides of the mouth, a little bit more stability, not letting him drift so much, I was able to let him find his way. And you'll see there's another strike canter, so that was good. So I let him go again, and then I go again and try. You'll see that I walk with him quite a lot. Right here, too much pressure for him. So I let him walk for a moment, keep him loose, and then start again. That's okay, doesn't matter. And there you see him again. He went to that moment of scared where he used to go with the bronking. But because I'm able to show him a bit of support, he's able to find his way. Again, there's the bronking that he did before. But because I can show him the support, he's able to find his way. Again, I don't correct him on this because he's not being naughty. It's just him finding his way. And again, you see that canter has gone from I can't canter without drifting at all to I can do a bit of a crazy transition to, oh, I can actually canter okay here. And you just watch these transitions up and down and up and down just get better and better and better. And he even starts to round down. When he disunites, I just do the same, bring him small again and ask him to go again. And you just see that canter is getting more and more measured, 
more and more rhythmic. He just understands what's going on. And notice every time he canters, I start to think of trot. Every time he trots, I start to think of canter. So that those transitions really help him grasp and understand that actually everything's okay. Oh, look at him go, I'm so proud of him. He's such a beautiful little boy. I love watching this. And again, you see there, I let him go a little bit because he really started to get the hang of it. Look at this. You can see him starting to use the hind leg because what this double lunging does, it gives them that little bit of ability to understand the concept of being more upright, to understand the concept of not drifting, but while still giving them space to drift when you want them to. Again, you don't worry about the disuniting just like we do with the regular lunging. And then when he disunites, you bring him back, you try again. Oh, I feel like I'm lunging him, I'm actually clicking. Give him time, he's a little tired here, and you can see I just come in a little bit closer so I can help him a little bit more, and there he is. And look at that, he's getting the hang of it more and more and more. Look at the, the steadiness. He's not racing around like a bronc anymore, he's really starting to understand. And when he goes back to trot, I want to make sure it's a forward trot. There we go, the good strike again. Notice again, his head can still come up. Notice again, he can still drift when I want him to. Good boy. <laughs> Sorry, I keep talking to him because I'm watching him. It's so nice to see. But you can see that this is the giving him that ability to understand stability, which helps him when you ride him. So that he's not going from, I've got no guidance at all from my rider, when you just lunge them regularly, to, okay, now be really be with me and be guided. This double lunging gives him like a stepping stone in between. It does take quite a lot of coordination. You've got to stop the the um, the lunge ropes from being on the ground. You've got to make sure you don't trip over. You've got to make sure you don't wrap it around your hands. You've got to make sure you can give one and release one at the same time. So it is something that does require quite a lot of coordination. Your arm gets tired because the whip gets heavy. There's so much to think about. To, as I said, to the point where I can't even talk about it while I'm doing well, talk to you while I'm doing it. And you know me, that's not normal. But never keep going. And here is this truck. There we go. But it makes such a difference to the way they go. It makes such a difference to the way they ride. And you can really see how the difference in him in a week, or less than a week. I mean, the last time you guys saw him was Friday. So we've only done a few days to a, a small week. Okay, so here we're going on the opposite direction again. And this is his sticky side. So you can see just like last week, he's a little bit choppy in his trot. I've got him flexed to the outside a little bit in the beginning to help him find his balance, to help him bend to the side that he finds easy. And I'm letting him drift a little bit more on this side, but mostly through the quarters versus the whole horse. Whereas last week we let him go with the whole horse. Now you watch here, the trot's now gotten more open and he started to bend through the rib cage in the, on the inside because that's what stepping those quarters out does. I go straight into the transition work again and if you saw just before, I ask for that canter in a moment when he's stepping to the outside because what that does, again there, is that gets him on his outside hind leg when I'm asking for the transition and it stops him from getting too concerned. It stops him from getting too worried. But again, on this side, you'll see I walk a lot more than I do on the other side. He's not 100% bent to the correct direction because I really need to give him the space to sweep those quarters out so that he starts to get that flexibility, that suppleness that he really needs. So you can see here already by using that leg yield to increase his suppleness, he's already starting to bend in the correct direction. It doesn't matter that he canters like that. The point is, it doesn't matter that he canters like that again. But the point is, is that he's starting to open up his body because that's what the leg yield does. So that's what we've concentrated on this side. It is really allowing him to open his body to start to bend in the correct direction. 
Don't work too hard on this because you also don't want to tucker him out. I hope you enjoyed that guys and I really hope that helped. And you can see the massive difference in him. He's gone from a horse that really looks like a proper breaker, really looks like a horse that's just come out of the, just come off the track or just come home from the breaker, to this this week where he's really starting to get the connection. You can even see his trots changing, he's really picking up. It makes the world of difference. It's absolutely amazing. Hope you enjoyed it, guys.